This is a solution for Anji's binary tree, problem C from Code Forces 911. So let's start at the root and let's consider going to the left subtree or the right subtree. If the label of the root is L, then that means we're going to be sent to the left subtree without any additional cost because that's just what the default path is. If we were to go to the right subtree, then we would have to change this label from L to an R. And so we would have to incur one unit of cost to go to the right subtree. So this tells us that um, we can draw an edge from the root to its left node with a cost of zero. And we can draw an edge from the root to its right node with a cost of one. And another way of thinking of this representation is that um, if we were to go to the right node, it, we need to spend at least one or exactly one change of a label to reach this node over here. And we have to change zero of them to reach a left subtree. And we can construct these um, edges in a very similar fashion for all of these nodes. So for example, if we assume we are at this node, um, the default trajectory would be we would go to the right child, which doesn't exist, so we don't draw any edge for that. But if we were to go to the left child, then we would have to change this label to L. And so that would incur a cost of one, so we draw an edge of weight one. It's a similar logic for this node over here, weight one. Um, this node doesn't have any children, which means it's a leaf node. So we don't have to draw any edges extending out of it because once we reach this node from the root, then that's an optimal path from, or not an optimal path, but that is a valid path from the root to a leaf. And you can't get better going beyond the leaf because there's nothing after that. And then for this node over here, its default label is L. So that means we can go to the left subtree for free. So we draw an edge with weight zero. And then if we were to go to the right subtree, we would have to change this label to R. So we draw an edge of weight one. So after we construct these edges, the problem now becomes, um, if we were to start at the root, what is the shortest path that we can take to any leaf in this tree. So in other words, we can do a BFS or some sort of shortest path algorithm from this root. And we can terminate once we um, find the closest possible leaf in this search. Now you could use Dijkstra's algorithm in this case, and it probably will run in time just because it has a 2.5 second time limit. But if you want a linear solution, then you can actually use a 0, 1 BFS. And what a 0, 1 BFS is, is that you just take a normal BFS, but instead of using a Q, you use a DEC. And the idea is that if this is your DEC, um, and we were currently processing some node V, then if V has an edge to another node, let's say x of weight one, and x hasn't been visited yet, then we can put x at the end of the queue, like normal. And this is just normal BFS logic. However, let's say there's a node that from node v to node y, and it has an edge weight of zero. Then what we do with y is that we can push it to the front of this deck, basically saying that y is gonna be a candidate we checked immediately after V. And the reason why this works is because, um, because all the edge weights are either zero or one, this guarantees that we visit all these vertices in an order such that the subsequent distances will not decrease. And so with an O1 BFS implementation, this gives us an O of N complexity. And we can just continue this BFS all the way until the current node that we popped out of the queue is a leaf node.